Hi, this is Denise Matthew. Hope you're doing well. Back again for another week of the transits. So we have a few things happening here this week, and we do have the final eclipse of 2021. And I can't believe we're actually in December already. I mean, it just seems like yesterday that it was January. So uh, it's gone very quickly, and some people will be happy to see the last of it, and some people will say it was a good ride, and some people will be somewhere in the middle. We all have different feelings on it. This last eclipse that we're going to have is interesting in that it sounds like it's a positive eclipse. Bernadette Brady, who is the author of The Eagle and the Lark, she talked about this eclipse as she has a whole book about eclipses is actually pretty decent. It's an astrology book. And if you're interested in eclipses and what they mean, uh, it's a great book to have a check on. And it also does talk about pre predictive astrology, if that's something that you're interested in. But I'll just read that what she said about this particular eclipse, because I thought it was pretty good. It says is this is a very joyful, happy family of eclipses. And there's a sense of good news falling in love, a peak experience that is joyful in some way. The benefits that appear in the individual's life under this eclipse series can be expected to continue well after the eclipse has passed, which actually bodes really nicely for this particular eclipse. And I like I like to uh, I, I like when I have good news to give, you know, and I like to deliver it. So that's why I wanted to read that. And from a human design perspective, it is an interesting energy in that we're talking about an eclipse that has a lot of second and fifth line energies. So we know that a second line is about natural talent, and it also is about being called out. Then we also have some fifth line energy. We do have a lot of projection within this energy. Now with projection of any kind, we always know that it could be something that we're not aware of. And sometimes we can be more aware of it, but maybe we don't necessarily have the skills that people are projecting on us. Now, when you have a second line energy, you could have this innocent projection, having this uh, people believe that you are actually good at something or you're projecting out that you're good at something. You may not know that you're actually projecting it out when you have a second line. And you people might say, oh, well, you're really good at this. And, and you may you know, may not necessarily know that, that you're good at that, or maybe you don't feel you're good at that, but maybe sometimes you'll believe what they have to say, and that can kind of influence you in some way. So that is something that we could play into with this particular eclipse, this idea that people are seeing something within us that maybe we don't see within us. And it's an idea that we can explore those kinds of things that they're talking about and see, is it something I, I align with, or is it something that maybe I would like to develop more, or is it something that doesn't relate to who I am? at all. But generally, it's something that is within you. It's a natural talent that people can identify. It doesn't mean it's at its, at its peak or anything like that. It does mean that we can we can develop those talents more as we go along. And that's kind of what this whole energy is. In other words, you have a natural ability. You can be born with a natural ability to do something. Uh, maybe you're a, a good swimmer or something like that. But unless you're taking it to mastery, you may never be able to compete or be a master of that particular skill. It's a it's a potential, but it's not an actual. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about second line energy. Now, if we go through the energy of each particular gate, we see that the sun and the moon are going to be together. And that's what it's always like. This is like a super new moon. And it's going to be close to the south node, which means it's kind of past information or past things that we are good at, or maybe some past experiences that are resurfacing. And we're kind of honing in on those experiences or deciding how we want to go forward with them. Because we know that a new moon is always going to be something brand new that's coming in. But with it close to the south node, it seems that we're working off the old to walk into the new. And what does that mean for everybody, right? I mean, it, it is talking about the things that matter to us. What this particular eclipse is talking about being in the flow of life and being in our personal flow. What this says is that there could be an expectation or a projection. Maybe you have a rhythm that you, you don't like, and maybe you want to change it. Maybe you spend too much time on uh, surfing or doing social media or something like that. And what you want to do is you want to change that rhythm. What can happen is with this energy, you could have outside influences saying, oh, well, this is what you would be good at. And I feel that you could do this, this, and this. But the whole thing about the gate five is this energy of finding our own personal flow, finding our own personal rhythm. And that is coming from a place of inside us. The thing about the gate five is it does come with ritual and it does come with patterns and it does come with this idea of you like to do things over and again the same way every single day because that's part of how you like things. 
You may be so fixed in your routines that change can be problematic or really difficult for you. You like things to be a certain way. You like to have your coffee a certain way. You like to have the, you know, your blinds pulled a certain way, how much sleep you have. So rituals can be a big part of the energy of the gate five. If you have this now, the funny part is that the harmonic or the other part of the channel is the gate 15, which is really this idea of extremes and behavior. But when they come together, we have what's called the flow of life and being in our own personal flow. Now, the whole 515 channel is talking to this idea of a universal flow. We all have our own personal flow that flows into the universal flow. In other words, you could say we are one drop of an ocean and we all are drops of the same ocean, but we all kind of come together and we flow together. So that's kind of what it's talking about. So what this is is encouraging is what is your particular rhythm? And it's not about a rhythm that is set in stone. Well, I have to do this, this, and this. This is about getting in touch with your actual rhythm, your flow, your ability to to move through life. What do you want to do? How can you incorporate your natural flow into your life? And and can you kind of make it work so that you're feeling that you're at ease and you're kind of going with the flow of who you are and what you need? And you're also being able to kind of go with what needs to be done in in your you know, your, your day. The perspective is that when we get within our own personal flow, then we connect with the universal flow. And then when we're connecting with the universal flow, things can just kind of show up in our life because it's like, we're getting on that trajectory. I mean, this is part of tantric energy. And we talked about tantric energy being this energy of the higher version of, of something. Now here's the higher version of the love of humanity, the whole 515. And, and the funny part about this is, is that the flow comes from the gate nine, which we're um, we're just going to be moving out of. We're actually doing this week, and then we move from the gate nine to the gate five. It goes from being focused and deciding about the, the pattern that you want to put your energy into, the thing that you want to master or the thing that you want to push forward goes into the gate five. If you, There's several ways that it, two different ways that it could go, but we'll just talk about that one in particular. It goes into the gate five where we fix that pattern. And then we start to repeat that pattern. This is where we have rituals, routines, and we can get to the next level of mastery. It goes up to the gate 15. This is the love of humanity. And when we love humanity and we realize that the world is okay, then it can go to the gate 10. And we can say, they're going to be okay. Now let's work on ourselves. Let's work on our own selves. And that's the gate 10. So it's there's always a flow of energy, or it could go straight up right into the 31 seven and could go to the throat. And that's where we're manifesting this pattern and we're showing our leadership skills and we're directing people into the patterns of life. So that's a bit of a digression, but I think the most important thing to remember in human design is that this is always a flow of energy. We we want to isolate specific gates. And I've actually done that with the whole human design uh, mandala of life experiment. I've actually done that. But what I have noticed is as I go through it, it's a body of work. And that's what it feels like. It's a body of work because it is coming together in the body graph. And we're never going to be one particular gate. Maybe certain gates will be more prevalent for us or something that we notice more about ourselves, or maybe we need to work more on it, or maybe we do well with it, but it is not us. And even like incarnation crosses, I mean, I know we get all hooked into these incarnation crosses and I think that they're important. I certainly do. And I think that the more we know about our body graph, the more the incarnation cross will make make sense to us. But we have to remember, and I think that there was nothing more succinctly said than when Ra Urhu said that the incarnation cross is just a template. Everybody has an incar- incarnation cross and it's different. But he, he said it, it's like you have designer genes and my be he said his ass excuse me but he said my ass doesn't look like your ass in these in the same you know in the same designer jeans they don't look the same and i would say that's probably true so in other words uh you have the the uh the the right angle cross of the sphinx and that's here to direct people and somebody else has that same cross now they could have completely different ways of being and how they direct the world one could be a CEO in a in a company that's directing a lot of uh, business you know acquisitions and those types of things and somebody else could be somebody who's in self-help or something like that so that is what we have to remember it's a, it's a culmination of all the things of who we are when it when we bring it back to this eclipse we're talking about this flow of who we are how we align with the world we don't 
conform to the chart. We don't try and be parts of the chart. We be who we are. And then the parts of the chart can, we can notice it. We can part, know parts of the gates and those types of things, but we're always going to be the entirety of, of the whole process. And when that process is flowing in the right direction, that's where we're going in the right way that we need to go. Because all, when you think about the three tantric channels are actually all going to the G center, which is where the magnetic monopole is. Now, the magnetic monopole is connected to the gate too, but you, it's still going, the energy is still flowing to that area, to the G center. So this is really talking about what do you need to do? Where do you need to go? What makes you feel aligned with the universe? That is what this uh, eclipse is encouraging us to figure out what we align with, where we want to go in the future, what we want to do, what feels good, what feels, what doesn't feel good. As soon as we're trying to um, conform to the reality of somebody else's rhythms, then that's when we don't get what is right for us or what is best for us. So it's about what is your rhythm and what is somebody else's rhythm may not necessarily be the same. Understanding that you are worth taking the time to allow your own flow to be what it is. And the other thing that we have is we have the earth in the gate 35 line two as well. The earth is always going to be some level of grounding and earth in the 35 two is called creative block. And this really does talk again to we know that there's always going to be a polarity to every one of the earth and sun gates because we have an opposition. The opposition from the gate five is the gate 35. Gate five is, a, is called waiting. And the gate 35 is about waiting to have the creative flow or to have the progress that you want to have in life. This is about being choosy about where you want to have your experiences. This is an abstract energy. So we have logic with the gate five fixing the patterns and understanding that someday we want to bring them into mastery potentially. And we also have the gate 35, which is abstract energy. And this is about fixing and waiting for the right experiences or the right times to be creative. It's this idea that a friend of mine said that they, uh, they teach uh, students and they said that with uh, COVID and, and, the, and the kids being away from school and actually being away from other people, it was like their creativity has been stymied. It's like they, they don't know what to do anymore. And so this is where we have this ability to activate that creativity. But the only way it is activated is this inspiration or the muse comes to us and to be aware of the muse coming to us instead of raging against the system and saying, oh, well, I want to be creative now and it's not happening. And and then just quitting because you just think that it's never going to come. So this is saying that we can be creative and, you know, we do have a natural ability or, or this potential, and we can even be called out to be a cre creative because it is gate two, but this, th it is listening to the idea that life is about ebbs and flows. And again, we move into this flow of universal, the universal flow. How do we fit into the universal flow? And, you know, we only will fit into the universal flow when we find the, the flow that is correct for us. I mean, that's what it basically is saying. And if we look at Venus, Venus is also in the 61 line too, which is meeting Pluto. So it could be potential activation of the gate 61. The 61 is all about the occult, wanting to know the unknowable and those uh, kind of things that themes that we just can't have the answers to. They don't come easily. Anything that is considered occult is just considered to be unknown or hidden. Um, it is this idea that it is pressure because it is a pressure. It is coming from the head center and the head center is always a pressure. It, it is not an awareness, but it is a fuel for awareness, which, which means that we're getting even more fuel to potentially get those big downloads with the gate 24 and Uranus that's there right, right now. But the awareness comes over time. And it's this ability to understand that it's about timing and waiting and being patient. And I think that if there's one thing that we can say about this particular eclipse, it's saying, just be patient, allow things to unfold the way they're going to unfold. And when you do, it's when you things get easier, because it's not going to be as, um, as volatile as saying, oh, I just want everything to be as it was before. Because right now, uh, you know, we've just had uh, basically in the news, they've come out with another type of COVID and it, it looks a lot like it used to where we're getting the same 
feeling of, okay, we're going down the same path. How's it going to look? And people are looking at holidays and those types of things. What this is saying is that wait and watch and see what the patterns are going to reveal to us because we don't know yet. And if we are patient and we do have the composure, which we had last week, but now we're looking at this energy of Jupiter in the gate 30 line two moving about, I think the December 3rd. So it will be there for the eclipse as well. And this is all about pragmatism and using your energy in a way that is serving you best. And so in other words, this is basically saying the same thing. It says that when we have limitation, we can rage and get angry with the limitation or we can save that energy and direct it into something that we want to experience, into something that we feel is productive for us, a passion of some sort, an experience that we want to have, directing that that energy or that feeling or the emotions even, because it is part of an emotional channel of the 3041, into something where we are feeling that we're getting something out of it, something positive, something good. And that's what it's saying. So that's, again, this is the the fates, the 30 line two is the fate saying, okay, just hold on. What is the limitation that you see? Is there a way around it? If there isn't, can we wait and see how everything unfolds the way it's going to and how things will open up? And a lot of times things will open up without us even doing anything. We just wait and see. Even Mercury is in the gate five, line five. And that's again, once more saying calmness, having calmness and patience and waiting. And that is the key energy. If we can have the patience and calmness to understand that maybe we don't have all the answers now, but it works better for us in the long run, not to expend our energy into something of, you know, just getting angry when in fact we, and making ourselves feel horrible when in fact, if we expend our energy into something that we actually want to do and allow creativity to enter it when it's going to enter and work with it. Even though the earth is talking about this creativity ebbing and flowing, Venus is bringing the inspiration. So Venus is individual energy. We do have other individual energy that is uh, being transited quite a bit. And Venus is bringing the individual energy for us to be inspired, to be creative, to actually let the energy of our creative flow go somewhere and and to create something that makes us feel good. And and remember with individual energy, this is always going to be about a creative creativity that makes you feel good. It isn't about anybody else. If other people like it, that's actually great. But if, if they don't, that's okay too. And I mean, that's where we're going with this creative flow. It's about waiting, being calm and being peaceful and allowing everything to fall into place so that our road will eventually get smoother. One thing I do like is that we are beginning the week with um, the sun in, in and sun and Mercury in the gate nine. And what that really talks to is this idea of getting details. Now, this doesn't necessarily come with the stillness to figure out what all those details are. But when we when we keep in mind the the key phrase and I'll I'll tell you a little story that's interesting about the gate nine. Uh, I'll tell you a personal uh, experience with the gate nine. The long before many years ago, long way, way before I ever met human design, I um. I once read this little proverb and I didn't even know who it was by, but apparently it's by Latsu. And it said the the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. And I thought that that was one of the most amazing sentences that I've had, I had ever read because it, what it did was it kind of encouraged me to understand that every little thing that I'm doing that we are doing is eventually going to lead to, to a bigger something. And I think that if you just focus on what you're doing, the little things that you do every day, and I've noticed this in my own life and that things will just kind of, you'll think that you're not, you haven't done much. And then suddenly you'll look at sort of the body of work that you have and you go, wow, I have actually accomplished a lot. And you didn't focus on the big picture and overwhelm yourself. So in fact, you just focused on the little things that you could do. And the funny part is, is that I have the, the my uh, design earth in the gate nine. So it's an important gate for me. But what is really kind of interesting is that when I started to read about the gate nine, the one thing that I noticed was that that was actually written in Ra who had used that. He he wrote that, you know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. He sort of used that as a way to describe what the gate nine was all about. So what that makes me feel is that we are hardwired within ourselves to, to understand these things. And this is designed for me. And I don't know anything about my design, you know, you could say because it's unconscious. But what that says is it is a journey of a thousand miles and it is one step. 
And if we just look at the the journey and say, well, I'm not going to take a step because it's too long and I'll never get there, then we'll never get ahead. But that's what this is encouraging us. This is saying, okay, pick up the details, figure out what you have. There will st- be stillness coming. And I think the, the biggest thing with the gate nine is that we have this idea that especially a lot of times you can, you can get a little obsessed with the details and, and obsessed with getting more details and getting more information. I have, I've been there and, and just collecting and collecting and collecting. But eventually there will be a transit or there will be a a time where you have an electromagnetic or you go out to a library and you start to collect those details and and start to make something out of them and figure out what they all mean. And then you bring in and decide about what you need to fix on. And, And I think the biggest thing about the gate nine is this idea of what am I going to fix on? Because you need the stillness. The interesting thing is, is that um, the gate nine and the nine fifty two. It's, it's, it is about mastery, but there is this attention to be hyper-focused on the things that are not necessarily right for you. But yet when we allow ourselves to empty our minds, to allow what is important for us to come to us, that's when the actual details of what matters to us kind of float to the surface, you could say, and we can see, oh yes, this is where I'm meant to go. And it can be a while, but eventually it will come. And it's about having patience, just like the whole eclipse thing is this patience and waiting and understanding that the right patterns, the right things to fix on, fixate on to master will eventually come to you. And, and it will come only most times when you just let go and allow whatever the universe is going to show you to show up. So that's what the energy is looking at. But I think from a perspective of a worldwide perspective, the idea that we're doing the details this week is great because I think that it can be a time where we can cl- can collect a lot of information so that we will know where we're going in the future for the future trends of how things are going to play out for um, you know the, the holiday season and, and going forward into 2022. How are we going to play out with the whole pandemic? pandemic and the things that we've been living with since March, 2020. The earth is in the gate 16. And this is where we have what Ra Uru called the place where we have sophisticated patterns that are being, you know, because it is half of the channel of talent, which is the 1648. This is sophisticated patterns that are being talked about in the world. So this is where we have experts talking about the things that are going to show us the patterns for the future. So that's what we're starting out with. And we do have Venus remaining in the gate 54. I talked a lot about that last week, but the one thing about this is, is, um, um, Venus is encouraging us to spend the time with the relationships that are going to matter the most for us and in the relationships that are may- mainly just taking from us and not giving us maybe to reevaluate those if they don't, if you can't sort of upgrade them, then sometimes you want to let them go, or maybe you can upgrade them. Uh, Mars continues to be in the gate 43. And this is all about the pressure to get the mutation out into the world. And we, when we have the 6124 defined, we have a head Najna and then we have the 43, but we don't have the 23 that gets the whole uh, channel the 4323 to the throat, we can have this potential to have a lot of pressure to want to talk about the things that we know, to have this obsession with trying to get things out into the world. So that is something to remember that, you know, we might have a lot of pressure and the only way to release a lot of this pressure is uh, to have this concept of uh, getting out and doing something physical where you can't actually think because otherwise it can get to the point where sometimes you'll even get a migraine. The, the key with the whole channel 6124, the, the gift is, is awareness, but the gift is also silence. So the silence comes when we start to figure out those big questions in our mind. And when we get the downloads or the information, and that is when we get the silence because our mind is not no longer spitting those same stories over and over again, or the same kind of, what does that mean? And asking those same questions. And then we get to the silence. And that is the gift that we get from the 6124 when we do get the awareness. And on December 1st, we have Mercury you're going into the gate five. I talked about that already. And we also have Venus going into the gate 2061. This is about uh, the pressure to know and the pressure to fuel. And, and as I said, when we get to connect it with uh, Pluto, we do have this idea of sort of activating that searching for the unknowable, the pressure to know, and with, with no access to the throat, if you don't have that within your design, there could be this potential to uh, have a lot of pressure within it. And again, getting out into the world and, and doing the things that uh, can, will move your body or uh, make you uh, pull you away from this idea of getting lost in your thoughts will be very beneficial. 
I've talked about most of these energies when I talked about the eclipse and I'll just tell you the dates. So we have Jupiter moving into the line two, and that's going to be happening on December 1st. And Mercury also move into the gate five. Venus will also move into the gate 61 and that will all be happening on December 1st. And on December 3rd, we have the sun moving into the gate five and the earth moving into the gate 35. And I talked a lot about that already. On December 5th, we have Mercury moving into the gate 26. And when that happens, we just have this, I mean, basically you could say it's a lot of sales copy. It is this gate 26 is the voice of the new improved. So if you think about the gate 44, talking about the new and improved, trying to sell in, sell uh, items or new concepts to the tribe. Right now, this is like Black Friday sales. This is uh, all the sales that we've had, Cyber Monday. Monday, all the things that are happening. It's about this rush to get to get items, to get the new and improved. And you're going to have potentially, uh, based on Mercury going there on December 5th, this idea of a lot of more sales copy, a lot more, oh, here, here's, you know, buy this new thing and that type of thing. And so basically it's just going to push up the uh the frenzy of uh buy buy now uh and don't wait later kind of uh concept. Uh, but other than that, I don't think it's a crazy week. There is potential with the gate nine to get a little lost in in our thoughts and and sort of get lost into the in the weeds or the details. And again, this is another part of uh, what I find is best, especially with the gate nine. Sometimes at night you can kind of get so wrapped up into in this idea of all the details and and thinking about all these things. What I think is a great idea is to have a notebook by your bedside. Just write out all the things that you want to think about, all the details that matter to you, and then you can always pick it up the next day rather than think about it all night and actually not sleep because that can be a definite problem that uh, that I have dealt with. And it works really well for me so that I can uh, shut down my brain for a little while and uh, sleep because, you know, sleep is essential. Anyway, other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will see you again next week. Take care and bye for now.